I, I love bodybuilding and I love sharing bodybuilding with people who have a passion for it that's genuine, which is something I find very hard to find around me because most people do it for the reasons that aren't the same. It's like me choosing to be around someone who I respect and who has the same love for bodybuilding as me and that can only be a good thing. That's why I think Milos is, is ideal actually because he makes me remember why I love bodybuilding. James, what is going on, dude? What's happened, man? What's good, boys? How you doing? Both right? <laughs> hey, listen, th this is the first interview we have as me being official coach. Official. So that's going to be a good one. I have so many good questions on that. But first off, James, I haven't talked to you in a while, man. How how have you been? What's 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 going on? I feel like since the circles kind of dwindled out, I don't know what's going on in the James world. Uh, I've, been, I've been pretty busy just with the uh, the gym front, you know, sorting out the gym for December. Um, because obviously we're opening in December. So just stuff like that, really. And training, just training. Training and gym. That's all I'm dedicating myself to right now. Everyone else can piss off. <laughs> well, let me ask you. So you're opening your own gym or you had it before already? And now you're no, already me, opening? me and Jordan are opening a facility in December together. For the we first time? A, yeah, we have a premises already, That's but we haven't opened it. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you this right now. I didn't even think I'm going to go into that direction. You know, 1999, I got that uh, uh, there was powerhouse gym then turned into a gold gym and then into Colosseum. So it was my gym. And I'm on yeah. top of my career in 1999, right? I was climbing up the ranks. 99, I competed in every show, every single show organized, you know, and all that stuff. I beat Jay Cutler. You did, you did. <laughs> I always have to throw that. I have to throw that in, right? But anyway, uh, then I got busy with the gym. And, you know, like when you have that business side and then oh, I have to be a worry. And then I skip the training here, skip the training there. Right. It, it gets a little bit uh, focused off because now you're running the business. So sure. I just want to prepare you for it because, yeah. because now we are getting into this. It's going to be difficult maybe to manage it, you know, but it's very, very possible. If you, okay. No matter what. I have to train. So if you're going to oh, be yeah. putting it off, yeah, until the late, it might not happen because I skipped so many workouts. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, good luck because uh, I can only imagine what kind of facility that's going to be. Yeah, it, it's a combination of obviously everything that me and Jordan, all the years of training and the equipment we like. And, you know, so it's going to be, for people to train there, it's going to be like a dream for them because it's all been hand selected and, you know, it's going to be the best stuff, really. So that's the main thing. We have hand selected brands from different companies that match. Yeah, what you guys you've got um, Prime Atlantis, um, you know, Cybex, uh, <laughs> Nautilus, you know, everything that we've used and we like that we're basically getting. So it's going to be a, a, a museum of pieces, but the pieces that we know that we like. Yeah, that's uh, how I had hand picked in my gym in the powerhouse. You know, uh, power first, and then in in uh, Fullerton, handpick whatever equipment has the best leg yeah. piece, chest piece, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah. So you're designing it for yourself, but but that, that's gonna be ideal for everyone. I can't wait to do the training camp there. Yeah, no, we'll, like, that'd be great. That'd be great. <laughs> Put James and, and JP through the giant sets. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that because I watched a clip of okay. you training Jordan the other day. It got sent to me by someone, and it's you making Jordan do barbell lunges and he collapses <laughs> and he's only got he's only got like 20 kilograms on the bar so you've clearly destroyed him okay but but the, the best was we were doing a chest giant set and then the last piece was the, the incline machine right and i told him to close the eyes right and i pulled all the way there was nothing on it zero right and he's making all these faces and all these, and so now i open the eyes so there was nothing on it <laughs> <laughs> screaming it was just like you know stuff. He fatigued himself in a mind. Yeah, that, that, that's good. But anyway, look, uh, I, I'm beyond excited. But uh, Chris, uh, I started working with uh, James, and I'm going to tell you, this is probably perfect because it's never done before. So here is the coach and the athlete. Now, athlete is top IBB professional, uh, pro champion, made it to the Olympia, right? I, I looked at James for many years, and then... I even critique him here and there. Like last time I critiqued his physique was the Arnold Classic uh, UK, where he looked tremendous 
But you know that video footage that was uh, presented, you couldn't really see the quality. So actually I gauge, like, okay, he's not really there. But then when I see the high uh, resolution footage, I say, holy shit. But now that brings exactly my observation as a coach, right? I would like to uh, create more depth to separation, right? And start uh, for that fibrotic look, the, the, the fibers. And, uh, I mean, there is the way, and I'm going to tell you, power guys, right? They're, you know, they're, they're thicker more than a wider, uh, usually create that uh, dance look, but there's not so much uh, fibers. There's not so much paying attention to the detail and, and go for the depth. So as we're going to go along, I'm going to tell you like which exercises I think that you should throw in. But, mm -hmm. but right now, I want you to think like this, uh, uh, James. Your physique, a little bit wider shoulders, okay? A yeah. little bit uh, more V-tapered. You have a thick as a brick legs. You have a so much compact mass. But we want to, we need to expand it. Expand it. So but when you hit the pose, you cover as much space behind. Yeah. Working more on a width than on a thickness. That's how I see it. I honestly, it's funny. It's funny. It's funny because... We've, I've been training, I think it's about two weeks now, two, two, two weeks of it. And I, and I can already feel a difference, which is very positive. So I'm actually very excited. So wait, wait. So to put us all up to speed, you changed your training to Milos's recommendations. Yeah. Just introduced more, introduced more of the, um, you know, the ideolo ideologies that Milos has. The split's been changed now to be more focal on every individual body part back to like kind of traditional split. Um, which just sees me paying enough attention to each body part, I feel. I think um, you can get carried away with other splits where, yeah, they are really good for frequency, but you sometimes neglect a little bit of certain areas. So things like shoulders that need work. A regular split allows you to have just as much attention applied to those shoulders as, as you need, basically. So I just feel like you get a little bit more work done on each body part right now when I need to correct things. So it's like a bro split now versus like a push pull legs kind of thing, right? Yeah, and I I, I try not to use the word bro split because I try not to downplay it because I still think it's a great split and I like it and I've done it for many years on and off. Um, but yeah, it's it's basically a traditional bro split now. Listen, I've always done it. I like the bro split so much better. I enjoy it. I tried mm. push pull legs for a short time. I don't like it. I like paying attention to each body part fully, and that's just it. But but really, I mean, so put yourself in my position right now. Look, Chris. Like we all coaches, right? And we train other people. But now I don't want to let James be comfortable over doing what he was doing all the time, right? We want to make a difference. Now, you have to maximize everything. And here is, I already, as you can imagine, bomb, you know, his, his caloric intake, increase the protein intake, you know, putting more carbs in, you know. I'm trying to push as many nutrients right there. Now, he... Funny, you said the shoulders. You see that the, I bump up big time on your shoulders yeah, too, yeah. like it makes sense. pre intra post and everything else. Yeah, yeah I, I, I want that, right? So, psychology over physiology, also like mind over the muscle. I want you to see to start visualizing physique you want to see on a stage. You know, you see this. I look at your Instagram. I look through your old uh, competition photos, mm. and the oldest photos. I still wanna. As stupid yeah. big shoulders that you have, I want them wider. Okay, yes, so. so I want to create with the width. You're going to create more V taper, which creates more aesthetic look. So you would be aesthetic monster, and aesthetic monster is valued by everybody, right? Yeah, for sure. So we we do need also we're gonna you know when it comes to it we're gonna work on the poses. There's a certain way. You know, we always hit the pose for many years. So if you do, there's not enough room. That's it. <laughs> so if I do here, many people just do it. But this is what Arnold was talking, you know, to the guy in Pampigan. Don't be small. Be big. be big, right? Yeah. Cover as much space. You know, there's a lot of people do this. Oh, you can cover as much space. This kind of thing. So what you want to present on the stage, we have to bring improved dreams you know, improved, you know, so he has a tons of muscle already. Okay. Ideally, if I'm a judge, what would I want to see? I would want to see a little bit more retaping, a little bit more depth here. And then 
what I was saying about these striations, right? Mm. There is really a way, you know, when you train. And uh, I was studying Regan yesterday. He was doing a chest. Don't push, pose. So now, as you're doing whatever exercise, right? Don't try to think, okay, I'm going to push this sucker. No, no, no. Get me these striations. You know, I want to I wanna see it. I, I want to see it. Forget about moving, you know, mm. squeezing. Uh, bring that pain. Bring that burn. Now intensify the burn, right? Yeah. And then squeeze and have that peak contraction. His chest is starting to striate way yeah. more than ever before. You'll see. Regan's shoulders are starting. Hold on a second. Regan didn't have a fibers. Okay, mm. he didn't. All right, but he is getting it. So th this is what I, I mean. I want to be critical, and this is the first time live coach and, and client. I, I love James is, is what he brings, right? And I know that intensity, I know that focus is all there, and now he's hungry. But we, we can let him get away with it. So far, it's the five meals. You know, I already told you in the email, I'm looking for that sixth one very soon. Yeah. Too bad, so sad, right? We, Bodybuilders need to eat. It is what it is. So I want to, <laughs> you know, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. Bring it on. You know, we had that a uh, few months ago when we talked about the protein intake. You yep. remember? That sparked, that sparked most of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the, yeah. That was the seed. But, but I, I swear to God, you know, it's like, okay, it's accepted by the science. You don't need more, really. So what happens if you do put more? Mm. You know, and that's what I experienced. And, and I, I had that speeches in all my uh, training camps and seminars around the world. And then I have a people that were there attending and they really, I got the emails constantly. They double up on the protein and they, they can't believe the difference. I said, yeah. I, like I say, I, I can what, feel, what, what I feel no, yeah, I feel notable change. Even just now, I just put a t-shirt on in the bathroom and I looked at myself and for once I was like, yeah. I can see, I can already see difference. So I know that the, tra the trajectory is a good one even now. So with the changes we're implementing over time, I'm like, sky's the fucking limit. Yeah, yeah. So, so James, so what, how much protein were you roughly consuming prior to Milos? How much are you consuming now? And was there any type of like lag period where you're like, holy crap, this is kind of a lot? Or did you adjust to it quickly? No, because you know what? When I was younger, I used to eat a lot of protein. So when I was younger, I used to have like 250, 275 grams cooked weight per meal. No problem. And then I had worked with coaches who had a different philosophy, which is fair enough. And I did some other ways for a time. And then because you get so complacent with that, you think that's the way you need to do it. Um, so reintroducing the protein wasn't a problem. I can eat a lot of protein. So that, that, was, that was fine. We've probably gone... Well, I was only on probably about one gram per a pound beforehand to now what you know the 1.2 to 1.5 versus what i was so those so it's probably about 1.5 isn't it right now i don't know the exacts because i'm just following the, the orders I, I didn't put listen i could have jumped up uh, straight yeah. up but it's okay it's not realistic so yeah. first uh you know two weeks this now i increase it and uh, i already yeah. i'm telling you i want to further increase of course I don't want to make you miserable. I don't want to make you bloated and all that stuff. But let's let's define. Okay, seriously, we never did this. Let's define for uh, all the humankind and then for all the bodybuilders. What do we want nutritionally? Right? What what's the ideal? If I would say, if I have a all the nutrients in the right amounts at the right times, so I can build the tissue with, without interruption and compromises, and I can have all the energy to just use it as needed, you know, not even store. I don't want to even talk about necessarily store the glycogen or store the fat. It's just like, if I have, I'm an energetic, I can train my ass off, I have it for that, beautiful, right? So for, for me, I think that would define perfect nutrients, perfect diet. I have everything at the time that I needed, maximized, beautiful. But we all, and Chris, I told you this before, I think we all compromise a little bit. We, you, you play it safe and you can't downplay it this and downplay it that and now I'm not hungry. You, you can eat when you're hungry. You eat when you're supposed to put yeah. those nutrients in. So everything is flowing, right? 
until it comes to the point, oh, I'm so bored that I can't even breathe. Okay, now we're going to have to adjust. So this is, I'm, I'm still learning James and you see, this is what I do always. He gave me his diet. Okay, now I'm going to use your foods and I'm going to bump it up a little bit. And then we were, ideally, you should eat what you love eating, right? If you eat some, uh, I don't eat it, then don't eat it. Let's eat what we love eating, but nit, nit, nitpick, right? So th this is where, I, where I'm at. So, that, that, so James, that's roughly what, 300 grams around? Because you're around 300 pounds when you started? And then now roughly 450 grams of protein? We're, 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 yeah, we're well over that now. We're like, um, there's like six servings a day because one's oh, an yeah. intra. So when you incl include intra workout, we're getting over 300 quite by substantial amount. Whereas before I was probably getting around about 270, 275. So the bump, this is the initial bump is a good little bump. Um, and then like Milos said, there is room to still move. And there will be room to move because we are going to go from that five to six meals eventually as well. Yeah, and I gave him a green light. And this is for me. If at any point of the day, my athlete actually feels hungry, eat, mm. right? Which means we underestimated your caloric intake for the meal before. So we underestimated. So if there is ever a sense of, uh, you know, no, 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 no. We are in a growing phase. You cannot be hungry. Mm. You know, so if you're hungry, be underestimated, right? This is yeah. how I look at it. But I don't want to really overestimate it, put like way too much, which would be stupid. Are you, are you yeah. needing to do any protein shakes or are you just driving all from meat and foods? No, all from solid food. And even the meal that has some protein in it is a mixture of like a, a Greek yogurt with protein to complete the protein. So that's like my second to last meal of the day. Everything's pretty much solid. Um, the only like obviously intra so workout. Again, yeah, intra this and Pepto Pro, which I use because I get that. Obviously, Yamamoto have a Pepto Pro, so I just use that. Uh, or you could use EAAs, but the Pepto Pro's obviously casein hydrosylate, so it's easy for me to digest. Very fast. Yeah. Look, uh, and this is, you guys know, uh, with, with uh, Samson, of course, they increase the protein dramatically. And then it's like, oh, if you cannot have that much from the solid food, add up with, uh, with the protein. Like, I, you know, so uh, as I put it there, okay, I want 60 grams of protein, and you're going to have a 400 grams of yogurt and whatever protein that is, and add up to make up the 60 with, uh, you know, uh, protein powder. Yeah. I, I'm all for it. As a matter of fact, you know, just think about it. All the foods take much longer to digest, to assimilate that protein, right? And all the protein powders, especially the Pepto Pro being so, so quick, you know, it gets your amino acids sooner. So think about it. in a in a meal, wouldn't you wanna rather have a you know immediate, intermediate, and long acting rather than just long acting? Mm. Because you know, you're gonna have to wait until this is digested and released and possibly assimilated. So it's never a bad idea. I did this many times. I throw in uh, one scoop of uh, protein with actually each meal. <laughs> yeah. I did this, uh, you know, many times. I, I, this is also coming, you know. Right now, we are, we are what it is, you know. I'm, I'm super pleased. But, but James, this is also uh, how I want you to really think. You are a seasoned veteran. You can't uh, uh, teach an old dog a new trick, right? Kind of, I'm the same way. I did the same exercise, the same way. For, you know, I did the same uh, pose, the same way because. Yeah, we are creatures of habit, and we just repeat it. But then there is that question. Can we improve any aspect in any way, nutritionally, then training-wise, then posing-wise, right? So posing also, when, when you do it, I want you to do even some stupid angles that you would never even think it, it's working, okay? You know, so think about it. What do we want from the side? Any side pose? Okay. You want a big here, you want a small here, you want to, you know, present your chest and big shoulders, arms and all this stuff, hanging hamstring. Okay. How do we do that? And is this the way you're doing it, really emphasizing the most? Mm -hmm. Then you start turning around, bring the chest up and down, yeah. play with it. You know, I was so pissed off about uh, this one photo shoot. The guy was telling me what to do. And I was like, hey, man, I'm posing for 20 fucking years. What do you, you stupid <laughs> photographer is going to tell me? 
No, no, just, just do it, just do it for a Polaroid. And then I did it. I said, God damn, that looks good, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and I didn't want to do it. And then I said, okay. And this is how I look for, for everybody. You know, mm. so you have that big, powerful physique. But I still think when you hit the poses, you don't make yourself as big as you are. Yeah, it needs to be more open, the, more open. The, 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 yeah, more open. You, you know, so this uh, cover the space, you mm. know. Shut the lights and then cover as much space behind yeah. it. This is, this is how I look at it. Yeah, I have a bit of a habit of pulling everything centrally rather than expanding. Yeah, yeah. They're the poses, right? They're the poses that you need to do centrally, and uh, I, I want that. Even, even today, I was posing with the with the Regan for an hour, and, and he was a kind of not bothered, not pissed off, but he says he if he squeezes hundred percent, it's not much different than if he squeezes like seventy percent. So yeah, yeah. And uh, John Meadows used to talk about this: the certain poses and certain muscles. It's it's true. You squeezes like seventy, and everything is there. And then now you can keep squeezing, but it's no difference. But it's more effort, and then you might be shaking. And I, no, no, no. So certain poses that don't require to squeeze the life out of it. Yeah. You know, like most muscular, obviously, for sure, you need a hundred percent. When you do the abs, you have to blow everything out. Quads, feathers, right? You have to. But uh, some poses like. Can you really squeeze biceps any harder than you already do, right? No, it's debatable. Yeah, you can. I mean, with side chest. You squeeze side chest too hard, doesn't do anything yeah. different. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so this is how, but, but you know, I just want you also to be very analytical. Okay, I'm happy with this, but can I do it better? This is how I look at it. So from nutritional aspect now, I like the choices of foods and timing. Uh, look, uh, Chris, I, I, I even throw in exact times i i don't expect that maybe people are going to be really on the clock you know when i put the meal eight o'clock or you know but i give you the roughly timing right you wake up one hour later and you want to move everything okay but uh, what i was talking about this consistency i want your body to feel that nutrients are coming carbs protein fats as needed as they're there so it's it's beautiful flow it's not like, oh, we have a dump because too much, too long, it's not happening. Then I'm hungry, then I overload myself. So ideally, of course, we, we can do everything I did, but ideally I want that flow. And then when your body gets used to it, it's so much easier to peak that kind yeah. of thing, right? Yeah. Because body yeah. expects it. Then you just bump up all over, this and that. Then inspect what you expect. You can kind of expect it. This is what's going to happen. I already know. But many times when you don't know, oh, I hope to God, <laughs> you know, it's going to go in the right direction. Yeah, that's true. You know, so why guess? Yeah. You know, so we should know. So that's why we have a plenty of time to do that. Uh, th th these are my principles, yeah. James, I have the best question ever. So what led to the decision to work with Milos? What, like... Was it somebody you knew? Somebody was like, you know, this dude, this this, this older dude, Milos, knows his shit. You should try, try him older out. Older dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see if he picked up on that. The one word that always springs to mind, if anyone asks me, is, is, is passion. Because there's a lack of it in today's bodybuilding. And even I find mine dwindling when I'm around the modern culture of it all sometimes. And I'm, I, I love bodybuilding. And I love sharing bodybuilding with people who have a passion for it that's genuine, which is something I find very hard to find around me because most people do it for the reasons that aren't the same. But I know Milos is from the old cloth. So it's like me choosing to be around someone who I respect and who has the same love for bodybuilding as me. And that can only be a good thing. That's why I think Milos is, is ideal, actually, because he makes me remember why I love bodybuilding which a lot of people don't have that effect on me. Wow. Let me tell you something. I was not expecting an answer like that. I was expecting, oh, I know so-and-so who worked with Milos, had a lot of good things to say. I didn't mm. realize how you saw something in a coach that was ultimately going to bring something out in you, outside of strategy, principles, etc., but something out in you and the passion. Because as you stated, 
you know, bodybuilding is very repetitive. It's very easy to lose focus. It's very easy to lose motivation. But when you're with somebody who's just as passionate as you are, it amplifies your own love and passion for it. And therefore that translates into everything getting better. Yeah. and, 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 And I think with me personally, with myself from life experience, you know, I grew up without a dad. Yeah. So I'm very much aware of people, males, especially in their qualities. And they stand out to me a lot. You know, I've, I've, I've formed some really great relationships with men over the years who I respect a lot. And um, having that lack of kind of relationship with a father to say, let's do this sport together or do this, do that. I always found that comfort and that relationship in my training partners or people that I respect. So there is a kind of deeper thing to me and I don't like it to get it too deep because I think, you know, I don't want to be a burden on anyone and think like they need to rely on you know, I don't want them to think, oh, I'm trying to be their son because I'm not. But I, I really respect and I care about people who have something in them that's a quality that stands out to me as someone who grew out, who grew up without a lot of guidance. But that's solid. That's Milos. Like this yeah. clip right now in this podcast, that's like it's it's not something people talk about. You know what I mean? A lot of some people, James. I always applaud you for being able to. You know, it's not that you don't give a shit, but like. You, you are your own person. You're going to say what you feel and that's it. But I feel like that's missing with a lot of people and ultimately making a decision based on a lot of that is a lot more decisions are probably made that way, but people don't admit it or they don't mm. even, they don't have the introspect to even see that. But that's, that's awesome. I, I love everything that I heard. Listen, my my passion is there. I, I can't hide it if I try to, right? You know, because mm-hmm. you, you see that. Now, I don't need to coach people. I don't need to train people, right? I do it because I love it. And then yeah. when you're at this high level, and I can actually take uh, something like James, which I always think, yeah, it's not like you are unfulfilled uh, filled your potential, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it is. I think that your potential is a little bit more than so far you yeah. presented. As much as you already you know, blew away everybody on the stage, you won the shows, you made it to the Olympia, right? But it's always... Was he maximized on the stage? So I would like to see how far we can push it. Mm-hmm. So put it this way. Now, uh, James was uh, resting and all, and he just started. Now he's, this, he's in the building phase. And we are not building the house or a building. We are state empire, right? You know, you want to you wanna expand it. This is the goal. Every day we have to build some tissue. Yeah. <laughs> as stupid as it sounds. Every day, you can't be lacking anything. Okay? If you have a little bit too much of, and you put a little bit body fat, you know, I, you know me. I don't, I don't like to off-season get big to, you know, for the purpose of being... No, 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 no. That's excuse to get fat and be out of shape and, you know... Yeah. No. I, pressure is on, but we need to determine how far we can push the carbs, how much protein we can increase... And I have the guys that went over my recommendation on the protein, and then a month later, told me, Milos, I use even more. More I put, you know, better it was. So it's like almost to reconsider, should I even put more? <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Seriously. I, yeah. I, as I was saying, I, I was on 450, 550. I have those journals, yeah. uh, grams every single day. But when you consider, right, I'm, uh, I was 230 pounds, uh, 240, and then I went to 250, right? I didn't... 500 grams is more than two per pound, right? Mm. And, and I had a 550. Uh, I tried to push it. So th- this is what I told you already in that, that uh, WhatsApp. You eat that much protein, but if you can put a little bit more comfortably, put a little bit more, you know? Mm. Even though we are still early, I, I want gradually to, to expand and you know, I, I want to see those improvements from, from up, update to update. Yeah, for sure. But uh, the name of the game is, let's be honest to ourselves, are we maximizing? And then you're going to feel, you know what, on, on the leg day, because on the leg day, your legs are huge. I kind of didn't push it crazy on the leg days yet. Okay? Yeah, which made sense. You know, if, you, if you look at your leg day. Mm. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I want to put priority on certain body parts that I want to see really expanding. And uh, 
speaking of that training, if you, uh, Chris, if you ask, like, did he, I, I didn't really instruct uh, James exactly do this, this. There are still, you know, some supersets and giants that I might throw it in once I see your gym and how it can be done. I still believe in some myofibril hypertrophy. You do a couple of heavy sets, you know, the, the heavy duty, progressive overload, you know, you still feel it. I mean, but then the rest is, imagine that in 15 minutes, you're going to step on the Olympia stage last time in your life. Last time that the world is going to see you is that, okay? So do you want to be crazy pump? Like you could not be more, you're going to explode the next, next uh, rep you do. This kind of feeling I want you to experience in training, you know, when uh, whatever, chest, shoulders, arms, you know, when it comes to that point, you know, get to that super crazy exploding that you surprise yourself yeah. how exploding fool you look. Then, you know, if you continue and you, when you start losing the pump, it's usually a sign, okay? Yeah, yeah you should have yeah. finished it right there. Yeah, but so, Milos, if you uh, achieve that exploding look, sometimes people, you know, don't achieve it. They're they're pleased with the okay. I feel pumped. I'm there, right? No, 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 no. Pump more, <laughs> you know. Pump more <laughs> until you're about to explode. So, Milos, mm -hmm. you, if I'm understanding what you're saying, is when you say you're okay with doing some heavy stuff and then obviously do the pump after, it's like. You're basically doing maybe one or two exercises of straight sets, heavier weight, and yeah. then the last few exercises more of like a giant set fashion, right? Yeah. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. yeah okay. That's pretty much how I do it. Sometimes I put the uh, heavy giants, heavy giants, right? Mm. Combine, you know, back, you're going to do rowing, pulling, stuff like that. You, you can combine it, right? As you know, there is not really a rule. Right. But... If, I, if I'm true to maximizing, okay, now maximize chest stimulation or back or whatever, chest, what does that mean? I said that many times. Maximal stimulation of a maximum amount of muscle fibers of the chest. Upper, middle, lower, inner, outer, everything, you know, myofibrils, sacroplasmic, everything. So if I don't do anything heavy, you know, I kind of like, oh, shit. I didn't, you know, go for a... I didn't have that kind of stimulus. So I, I do want to achieve that eventually at one point of the training. Uh, James, speaking of heavy, I saw a video the other day. You were you five plates on the uh, on the bench? Yeah, and these are old looks videos. Like you're moving they're in my old gym. They're old videos. Oh, old videos? Yeah, saying, they're old. That looks like you're they're moving just for the views. Because, yeah, that's just for the views. Just to keep my Instagram working. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a while ago. That was a while ago. That How was like 2000. And, I don't know, like six. I was I was doing like sets of six to eight with that kind of weight back then, but I don't really do that now. That's uh, how's your body feeling? Are your injury injuries? No, 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 no issues, no overuse. Zero injuries. I'm, awesome. I feel tw I feel twenty five. I just don't look it. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, because well, that's because the again, only thing again, that can stop you. Yeah, again, even with the because, like I said to Minas Paul, even with the heavy training. So even back then, that was probably my first one or two exercises in a workout. And then when I follow up that, a lot more squeezing, a lot more time under tension, a lot more like concentrated stuff. Um, the one thing that I haven't really done a lot of is the giant sets. So that's why I'm quite intrigued to in implement more of those. And I do have a little private gym that I train at when I'm here and a private one that I train when I'm with Jordan because he has his gym, which allows me to do those giant sets uninterrupted. So it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Giant what? sets are really hard to do at a regular gym. So it's like really difficult. <laughs> yeah. But Chris, you talked about this. Uh, I want to touch the subject so uh, um, James can hear it. You talk about uh, stimulation in elongated position, right? Yeah. Mm. So, and, and you know, now think James' physique. And what I say, I want to expand everything, right? So I do want to, every muscle fiber of every muscle, Complete stretch, elongation, right? Mm. So uh, sometimes if reps are not full full range, right? You don't get the full lengthening, right? So when, when we're going to do that, those super slow eccentrics, but going that extra inch maybe, to have what I call a stretch pain. You know, so 
when you in a completely elongate, it's not, let's say chest, right? You're gonna go down, you know, here. And a lot of people don't go that extra, extra stretch. I see an atomic chart and I see fibers, you know, the insertion origin, you know, shit. And I say, okay, now did I elongate this fiber maximally? Mm. Or it's still so and so. I, I I do want that. And then as uh, when I told you about this uh striations uh, and then shorten it maximally. Did you shorten this much or this much? You know how I can squeeze this much or this much, right? Mm. It, it's when I talk time under the tension, time under maximal tension. I, you squeeze the biceps, okay. But now I try to squeeze the shit out of it you know, until it almost cramp, like, oh shit. The cast I was doing this with, uh, uh, with Regan. He's doing the biceps, okay. But I can see you are all the way up, but you There's didn't more. cramp it up. Mm. You yeah. squeeze, yeah, you squeeze almost to the cramp. Oh, no, I have to release it. You know, I will say this, and I've learned this myself with my training age because I'm not nearly as strong as I used to be with all the injuries I've obtained from lifting like an idiot, but I have to train that way to create that lighter weight to give the same tension right mm -hmm. and with that squeezing and focus on the, the loading the elongated position it is tremendously more difficult on the muscle you're targeting than just moving heavy weight in a short range of motion like i had some like the other day i was doing curls and i only had to, i only had time to do i think i did six sets total um mm -hmm. and i basically do a set wait 45 seconds do a set 45 seconds do a set and did like a revolve, something like a giant set, and I really squeezed. None of the weight was heavy at all. And the next day, my biceps were so sore, way uh, more uh, sore than they were the week before uh, uh, doing yeah. like regular heavy weight. Uh, I, I know this. I know this because I can get on a machine like a hack squat, yeah. and I can put myself in a grave on four plates aside. I might be, yes, I can do a very heavy hack squat, but I can also summon and muster up that intensity and that, that direct isolation and, and precision without having to go that heavy. Don't get me wrong, like I think it is good, like we say, a couple of your sets to start the workout, you, you maximize load. But I can get on a piece of equipment after that load's done and I can bury myself with like fuck all weight and, and just really hurt myself. And I like that. that. That feeling you get from that is what bodybuilding more so feels like for me. Yes, yes. Especially that hack squat, now that you say it, right? Of course, mm. you play with the tempo, right? You go a little bit slower and all the shit. But I said that many times, and I don't care to repeat myself. I want people to understand. You want good pain, not the bad pain. Yeah. Good pain is a muscle pain, right? Bad pain, if you all the joints and you know, like, like the whole body. No, I want you to zero in, focus on that uh, muscle. And now, okay, it's painful, it's burning. No, 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 no. Can you make that burn more intense? Okay, can you now maximize it? Can you come to the point of, this is screaming pain, I have to stop. So that's why when I do those hack squats, right? That is zero momentum, slowly, right? Mm. But there it is, that pain zone, when you feel it, okay, somebody's stepping my quad with a knife and turning it around, like, okay, ooh, that's what yeah. I, wait, 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 I want it. I say, I want a deeper, deeper, cut i want to you know, seriously i want that muscle pain to be so intense you want to scream and you want to stop but you know every time when we feel this you, you kind of get out of it mm -hmm. and, and this is when when i torture people i don't let them get out of that no no stay there stay there stay there i see your legs crazy legs i mean seriously and i'm glad that you're doing the hack squats uh and I see that a lot of people throughout the years, they send me super slow eccentrics, but they kind of still rush through concentrics. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we can do heavy and do a few sets of those, but then I want those super slow positives, not negatives. Um, I, I said this about the uh, mountain dog, um, John Meadows, yeah. When he came to the gym, right, he was kind of, against slow concentrics. He was about explosive. Point. Wasn't he about explosive? He was explosive, yeah. He goes to centrics, but, uh, and then the explanation was, yeah, you don't, you know, the, the stimulate the high uh, threshold motor units and all this stuff. You say, you know, let's, yeah, let me, let's let me put do you to work, slow concentrics. Yeah. Let me put you to work. So <laughs> I, picked the, 
I picked the uh, super slow uh, pitcher cool for the biceps. You know, like this, like seven, eight seconds squeeze, P contraction, seven, eight seconds down, seven, seven, yeah. It's a nightmare. After five reps, I don't care. You're going to be screaming. And obviously, super squeeze. The, the incline or shoulder press is super slow concentrics. I mean, you're going to scream, I guarantee you. It's going to be so intense, it's ridiculous. And then, obviously, hack squats. But hack squats, everybody goes kind of slow down. And eh? you do most painful, super slow tempo on the way up you'll know very soon what the uh, screaming pain is all about. Mm. And it's safe. I mean, this is what I want to say. I'm yes. kind of afraid that James is training with JP. I've seen JP cannot possibly do anything light. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's against his religion. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know, so, so it's like, oh man, uh, and we all love to see it. I mean, I, I love JP and I respect every time. I say, Jesus Christ, I could only uh, wish I can do that. But every rep he goes into, you're just like, oh, please, God, please, God, please, God, yeah. don't let him tear anything, right? Yeah, for sure. James, when you train yeah. with JP, does he ever try to influence your training at all? Or is he kind of like, no, he no, respects Jordan you, knows. how you train, that's it, and he... Jordan very much respects my my achievements in bodybuilding, and I've got them for a reason. Like he knows there's a reason, and it's because I've listened to my body. He's all, he's often the person that's like I'm a fucking. He says that he's the fucking idiot for doing the things he does. So, you know, I won't attempt some of the things he attempts because I know there's no point. Um, right. You know, and then there's other body parts like legs that that I naturally can go beyond what someone like him can because I've developed a certain level of strength from them. But if it's a body part where I think it'd be silly to go and try and match for match, I wouldn't bother. Like back, I'm not going to try and row what Jordan rows or I'm not going to try and, you know, deadlift what Jordan deadlifts because it's just silly. But, you know, Jordan's very aware of that. Jordan's very respectful of that. Every choice in my career has been based on me taking one day at a time and feeling how I feel and acknowledging my instincts which is great because you know I, I even i have some clients um who train with more like that power lifting mentality of you got to train as heavy as possible and every set's got to be to failure and yeah. when they train together he's like dude what are you doing you got to put more weight away. in the bar you can't be doing light weight like this and growing you know it's like dude let me do my thing and you can train and do your thing, like you know, like, and that's it's it. Probably, it's probably a good thing that yeah. a lot of the exercises I can perform, Jordan can't. So we don't actually suit on a lot of exercises. So therefore, we never get into that situation. You know, Jordan, Jordan can't bench press because he's he, it doesn't feel right for him, and Jordan won't barbell squat because it doesn't feel right for him. And two exercises that I've done since I was thirteen years old. So you know, it's I'm comfortable in certain movement patterns. He's not on others. Have you seen James press in person? No, no, no. Oh my gosh, it's too. like the most mechanically sound press yeah. you've ever seen in your entire life. I, I've seen it in a video, yeah. I'm I think like, if you're like standing behind him for like a dumbbell press, you know, like watching his mechanics, his depth, and like where his le where his arms are, it's like you could. I, I am a firm try, believer. You know, like I am a firm believer that exercise selection is very individual, <clears> and I would never forcefully tell anyone to do an exercise. Because just because I can yeah. safely perform something doesn't mean everyone can. Vice versa. Yeah. Well, you see, when you have a perfect mechanics and you have a range and, and you have a mind muscle connection, that's all ideal. Now, what can you play with? Mm. You know, with the tempo. And tempo. then, you know, sincerely becoming that muscle, right? That's why I say be a biceps. Be a be a try be a chest, you know. Because still, if we mechanically think for a movement, right, we are not particularly thinking of just a muscle. It's just a joint and a range, and you still command your body to do that kind of press or pull or whatever else, right? But I really try to always people say, okay, zero in. Forget you have the arms. Forget mm -hmm. you have a joints. You just think that you have that muscle. Now, how can you, without movement, squeeze that muscle like a maniac, right? And then, so now, oh, prolong. What can you prolong? 
you can prolong four parts of the uh, every uh, uh, repetition. Prolong eccentric, prolong uh, uh, elongated position, Static, complete yeah. stretch, prolong concentric, a prolonged peak contraction shortened. Like this four. So I, I play with this tempo. You know how some exercises is pointless to, you know, prolong stretch position. You know, for example, it, 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 but uh, some, oh, it feels great. Oh, enjoy that stretch pain. Oh, when you feel, ooh, the, 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 the fiber is going to almost break how much is stretching. You know, when you feel that good stretching elongated, uh, you know, muscle fiber pain. You, you know, know what I've always, yeah, you know what I've always, like my way, my analogy of how I look at it, for example, you know, if I look at your t-shirt and I say, it's a supplement science, a bad rep is if I rush writing yeah. that word and I miss a few letters. Whereas a good rep is when I take my time and I write every single letter and you can read it correctly. So, you know, every millimeter of an exercise I perform, I literally want to be present for every millimeter. On the way down and on the oh, way up. And never that's, always, that's always been the that's way that I've good. tried to. Yeah, and, and, then, and then that comes from also the old saying of, you know, especially for like leg training is like functioning like a machine, like pistons, like they set at a tempo. They don't change. They, you know, they, they move or what they're programmed to move. You're not allowed to change that shit. So no rushing, no speeding up. You are set. You go in there, you fucking perform and you stay there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a very, very, very interesting. First time I ever heard of it. That's Even though I'm going to tell you my views, they're the reps that I change tempo at the parts of the movement. You could yeah. change the tempo, you know, yeah. uh, you know, on the parts. I was doing a, with, with Regan, uh, the pack deck sh shit. Oh, I watch, I just want to tell you, I want to tell you, I was watching Nick Walker doing a pack deck. Oh, his biceps you know, are chest, massive. <laughs> and uh, straight arms. Like this. Straight arms and biceps was going like, you know, Jesus <laughs> Christ. I'm still under the influence. It's like, I've never seen an arm like this in my life. <laughs> crazy. Nick has crazy biceps. Crazy arms. It doesn't look right. It's awesome. Um, so is the plan still uh, potentially Arnold in the spring? I I'd like to. Yeah, I think there has to be that much pressure. It has to be a big show. Yeah, they that's set in stone. I, I think so. I hope so. You know, of course, you have to get the invitation for it. Right? But uh, I'm sure you're going to get it. That's just enough time. So it's not like too far right because uh, uh deadline is the biggest motivator right we have a march first weekend it's always first weekend of march right it has to be that's traditional you know so that's just perfect time you know so every day now has to count because you know oh yeah i have a show next year you know i've seen this with so many people i have a show and then they don't take it to the limits every time you know, so maximizing. Sure. And what made me think of something funny? I'll, James, you'll laugh at this. So you're obviously going to get here probably seven to ten days prior, right? For Arnold, if you do Arnold, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we're 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 trying to schedule uh, Regan <laughs> two weeks for coming to the podcast. So I go, Regan, when do you want to come on? And he goes, Oh, let's do the fourth. That's a perfect day. So. I messaged Milos. I'm like, Milos, let's do the fourth. And he goes, oh, we can't do the fourth. Regan's flying. I'm like, well, Regan picked that day. And Milos goes, he's low carb. He has no idea what he's talking about. He doesn't waste it. So I messaged Regan back. and go, I go message Regan back. I'm like, hey, man, aren't you flying that day? He goes, oh, shit, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> he's not the best person yeah. to ask right now. <laughs> So funny. Milos, I, I was dying. I was yeah. dying. You're like, he's nobody talking a, about. He's low carb. It's, it's going to be a good show, the um, the two shows coming up. Oh, this this uh, Italy show is going to be freaky. Who's uh, been to the really... Italy show before in person? You guys been there before? I I, I competed in uh, Italian Grand Prix, but uh, I never watched. I did. I, 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 I did you a different know, like... Italy. I, I won the Tsunami Cup last year, which was a different Italy show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But how was that? How was it run over there in Italy? Is it pretty good? Yeah, I think uh, Barbara runs uh, the yeah. Italy shows really well. Yeah, Barbara, yes. Yeah, so. she does a good job. But, hey, this is going to be a stacked show. 
It's going to be Nathan is competing, right? And mm-hmm. uh, I talked to Nathan on the podcast two days ago. He says he's biggest ever and uh, leanest ever, you know, and he is yep. determined. So, of course, I had to throw in my, my same speech. Listen, of course. you know, it, it kind of, he doesn't train all year and then you know, you're a pro bodybuilder. What's your profession, right? So how can you justify not being all in? And you have a, so many years that you can be competitive. And now it's like that prime age, uh, same, James, like right now, yeah, it's time to focus on your pro bodybuilding career and get everything out of it. Because, uh, you know, you compromise. No, no, no. Maximize everything. So he was saying how he, he didn't train for like weeks and weeks and weeks. And then, and then after these two shows, He's not going to do the third show. Like, let's say, hypothetically speaking, he doesn't qualify, you know, in first two shows, there's the third show, right? I mean, you never know, you know, what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. No, no, he already booked the vacation. And then Dennis James asked him, like, hold on a second, you know, you book a vacation. So if you qualify for Olympia, you go on vacation and you have like only 10 weeks for the Olympia, right? Oh, yeah, it's plenty of time. But then again, yes. I said, like, Nathan, you have to be a pro bodybuilder, right? Which means uh, right now it's time to put all in. You know, but are you pre- are you prepping him, Milos? No, 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 no. Oh, he has a coach. I forget the, the name of Stefan. He said. I think it's Stefan. He's going to announce. Yeah, yeah, but he said he's going to announce on Sunday. So oh, shit, this is I'm not going to be before Sunday. So we're... I don't even know how I know. I don't, <laughs> yeah, even know. Yeah, yeah. I don't actually know how I know, but somehow no, I know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because uh, he asked Dennis. He asked Dennis when he's going to. Oh, shit. I, I think I said it at the Jay Cutler's podcast. <laughs> you, probably, you probably did. If I just did, you just did. <laughs> I didn't say the name. Oh, well. You know, I you know, I don't have a filter. You know, so, so many times after you do the podcast, I have to call the guy, hey, you know, take this out, take this out, <laughs> because I yeah. talk too much. <laughs> you know what, though? You said it yeah, on the so. podcast with Jay and the guys. Like, people think that choosing to do, like, these European shows is an easy squeeze. It really isn't. They are stacked shows. Like, you cannot underestimate... Who says that? The, if people don't realise... Some of these Italy shows... I, not even be funny. The year that I did the Europa... Europa, You had Rafa, Samson, me, Regan, uh, Lucas Osladil. You tell me that that is not a fucking good show. Like... Yeah. So, for anyone that thinks yeah. people disappear to Europe to do an easy show... I'm not being funny. Like you said... A lot of the guys that win the European shows could have won multiple American shows as well. Oh, for sure. Agree. I mean, when you look at it. But there was a guy on Instagram that opened, oh, he's a fan of Regan. But Regan, why wouldn't you do like American shows, but you're going like to Europe and, you know, that's like, if you want to test yourself with the, with, with the best, you so what the fuck are you talking about, man? You know, <laughs> it's just when they pick the shows, uh, for it's example, climbing. right now, James picked yeah. I'm a classic. Hmm. This is the prep period you, you plan to, and that's what I'm a classic is the second biggest show on earth yeah. with a crazy competition. And he, we are jumping into this. Yeah. Right. Back in my time, I was going to this European Grand Prix tours, right? You think anything was easy? It was it's never po- easy. Coleman uh, every single I've one. <laughs> single one. <laughs> Vince Taylor, every single one, and yeah. Chris Premier, and then uh, Kevin Lebroni, you know, shit like this. Like, oh man, <laughs> yeah. But but still, I I don't know. Once we start doing this with, with James, of course, and he's gonna be in crazy condition. Of course, he's gonna do the next show is uh, UK Arnold, yeah. and then if there are any few more shows right after, well, we don't UK more, Arnold, more than likely the UK Arnold is my birthday. Yeah. You guys- so that's my birthday. Oh, so that's, there you go. Yeah, and then, what, and then there's the, I know that there's the Detroit Pro in April as well. When is so, the UK, uh, Arnold? 16th and 17th of March, and my birthday is the 17th. Mm. Oh, yeah. So two weeks after. Yeah. Or one week after. Yeah, I like that show because it's on home soil as well. Yeah. Well, but, but Chris, no. And I know that James did multiple shows before, but there was also... I think when you won that Tsunami Cup, there was like a, another show that you did not enter. Yeah, I didn't, do, I didn't do uh, the one in between the two, which was the Italy, 
where Mark Hector got second and Patrick uh-huh. Johnson won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you did. Which, which, you know, for me, I would not understand. You're in contest shape and it's like two, two hours away from UK, right? Mm. Flight, for example. So, mm-hmm. so I, I, I'm not putting you on the spot. I'm curious if I would be you and I'm in contest shape and I did one and the other one, why not in between? It takes a lot for me to actually look at my physique and be like, yeah, you know what? I can go and actually fucking win. Um, and that's just the truth. Uh, okay, so, okay, now you touch that subject. Beautiful, beautiful. That's a mindset, okay? So it's a mindset. If you have a fear of something or you have a belief of something, you already know how it is. It's going to materialize. Oh, I'm confident. I look like shit. I'm going to hold water, I'm, I'm going to spill over, I'm going to be flat, I'm going, you know, if this is what you're feeding, your brain is reflecting in your body, I'm serious. Yes. You true. have to, and now before we start, you have to shake that off first. It was actually Sylvia from Yamamoto that encouraged me enough to do the tsunami. Good. Thank God for Sylvia. Yeah. <laughs> so I have an athlete like this, crazy uh, potential, super muscular, nothing missing, everything is there, already won the pro shows, right? And now he's putting everything into the basket. No uh, stones unturned, we're going to go into this. But have that, I'm maybe not so confident, maybe, you know, even when we discuss here, remember at uh, whatever YouTube channel, we exchange a couple of uh, uh, messages, you and I, uh, James, and you were saying, like, what would it take for you? Yeah, yeah, that was after the UK Arnold. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was it. So this is what it is first. Uh, look at Nick Walker. I asked him yesterday, the day before, hey, you have any message for Jay Cutler podcast? They say, yeah, I'm winning the Olympia. Yeah. And before when I asked him, he says, hey, he sees, he believes it, and he's all in it. Now, you tell me, with all your structure, built muscle, quality that you have, shape that you have, why would you put yourself as inferior to anyone? I know, I know, and that's why I'm trying to conquer. I'm doubting if I'm good enough. I'm not confident enough. You know, so you have to shake that off. You're going to work your ass off right now. Each day, when you go to, uh, you said the good word, Chris, introspection. Very few people introspect at the end of the day what did I do today that I'm proud of and not proud of? What did I say that I should, shouldn't have? What did I, da, da, da. You're a pro bodybuilder. You have to build the tissue right now. Do you feel like you build the tissue from your training and from your eating right now? If you doubt yourself, oh shit. That means the next day you have to bump it up. Yeah. You have to lay down and go to sleep with the conviction. Yeah. I've done my job. Check the day. Okay, and if you have a check good day week month, you know that you're gonna be confident. I'm bringing it on the stage. That's but if it. oh this day this week is I am uh, maybe maybe not. So so this is the this is the thing, Milos. The question that was asked earlier, why Milos? Milos has just highlighted why Milos. This is this 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 conversation now and the way that Milos talks is why Milos, because I knew that that's a very important Thank factor. You. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's self-explanatory. You can only you can see it now you talk. Yeah, but, but I want this to materialize, right? I'm not just saying you, you, mm. you're listening, but you don't hear. No, I no, want I you to, to hear it and recognize it. That's why I said every, all of us have that moment of, of truth. And I'm focusing on the truth. I'm going to just put my mind everywhere. I know the truth. You know how many people say, I know I'm not doing it right. When they say me, I know I'm not doing it right. I swear, I just turn around and leave. I, the yeah. conversation is over. Yeah. You know you're not doing it right. Eh? <laughs> I, I have a friend of mine, you know, ask me a question, something about uh, <laughs> about the gear, right? But he's doing it for a year and he doesn't want to change. But what do I think? I say, you already answered your own question. You say you don't want to change. So why are you asking me? You know, if you put this, I'm doing this for years, I'm not going to change. 
but he's asking a question. Don't don't bother me. Well, people like that are trying to get you to give them a positive feedback on what they're doing, so they can continue to do what they're doing. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, hey, this is what I've been doing. I'm not really apt to change, but what do you think? And they're waiting for you to be like, oh, actually, what you're doing is pretty good. They're going to be like, oh, perfect. That's exactly what I was thinking. But if you said anything negative, they're going to be like, I'm going to ask somebody else till I find the right answer. You know? Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. But James, like, you know. That was probably the best answer I've honestly ever heard of anybody uh, for choosing a coach because most of the time when I hear people choose different coaches, it's I want to change different direction, try something new. It is they had poor communication. Uh, it is they didn't bring me in shape or it is they seem to be bringing everybody else spot on, mm -hmm. but it's never a missing link where they connect well between the coach and the client. Kind of like, when you hear athletes talk about coaches and their team, they're like, mm. what's the most important person to you in your game? And they go, my coach, because my coach on that sports team or gymnastics team or whatever has that connection to them that brings out the best in them so they can perform. I had never heard anybody say that in bodybuilding. Yeah, I just, I just, I, I value, I value people. I value people on a, on a little bit of a deeper level than just the surface and um, I think to be extraordinary at anything, which is what we're trying to achieve here, is that you have to work with extraordinary people. So now, Chris, as you ask, and, and I'm sure that uh, a lot of people, Chris, says, oh, don't work with Miller. She's going to spill you over. He's going to, you know, do this and do that. You know, shit. I work with the, these elite people. And it's something just think about here. You're going on the Mr. Olympia stage and every little thing can be different, right? So you can play it safe. Okay, or you can push the envelope, you know, because if you push the envelope for the guy that would be normally seven, eight, nine, ten, could be top six. Let's say Gustavo Badal back in the day, right? mm -hmm. and he end up, you know, the, the push the envelope with the, you know, Dennis Fulf. I, I, I said this story before all the time. I had to put the five thousand grams of carbs in him, watching him every day. You know, it's you know in two and a half. I mean, crazy stuff. But you know, I take. Each guy, for what it, it's not cookie cutter and then do this, do that. That's why I said I, I looked at uh, James's diet and I didn't give him my diet. I gave him his diet, turn around, and then we're going to improve on it. But with uh, Dennis or with Gustavo, right? Uh, Gustavo is the guy that didn't need so much carbon, he would explode. Mm. You know, for uh, uh, Dennis, even though Dennis was telling me and Jay Cutler that normally, he would go so little carbs and he would be quite full. Well, it didn't work for us. I mean, I gave him 3,500 for a New York 2007 mm -hmm. and he kind of was good, but not really exploding. So Branch Warren won, Dennis James was second, he was third and he was delighted. But you know, when I'm looking at it, oh, it's more that. I kind of yeah. under it. It's like, so 3,500 should be plenty. You're kind of even feeling guilty of, mm -hmm. right? But he needed more. And there you go. So this is how it goes. I still, you know, right now, I don't even know how your James' uh, body is going to react, but you're going to test it. I mean, I'm doing this with uh, Regan today, uh, yesterday and today. We are kind of loading him up just like for the show, you know, and see if this amount of carbs would do the trick. Yeah. Okay. And then we have uh, two more weeks. Uh, but at least you experience this once close to the show. I don't know, James, for all the shows, you probably did the different kind of card manipulations. Yeah, but quite a lot of different probably things. at one, in one year, maybe your body was so responsive to it and you can fill up so much quicker. But then next time you try the similar thing, you're just not filling up. It's funny how many people will sit there and... Uh they keep getting hell bent on what they did the last prep. They're like, well, this is what I did last time. This is what I did last time. This isn't last time. Yeah, this is right. this time. You can't sit there and duplicate the same exact carb up, same exact protocol. Right. You could take some data points and responses for certain things that you do, but you can't sit there and expect it to be the exact same. I see so many amateurs say that and get stuck on that. Well, this is what I did last time. That was four years ago, pal. Yeah, the, you know? the body is a forever changing organism. Environment changes. You know, everything changes. Yeah. But Milos, but back to what you're saying about like, uh, you're kind of quoting what other people were saying, like, oh, Milos is going to make you spill over. 
The, the, the number one thing is this. No coach brings everybody in 100%, 100% of the time because you can't control every variable. And not yeah. to mention, as we all know, not everybody follows the plan as you tell them to. That's true. It's true. Many, many of those things. Look, look I'm, I, it's, I'll take the blame. You know, I can be a guilty one. But uh, everything considered, I'm going to push, 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 push. You need a little bit more, and I'm going to go for it. And sometimes it just doesn't go the way you expected, because I know I was maybe pushing the envelope. Okay, then you say, well, with this experience, I'm going to be conservative. And normally now when I work with the new people, I'm a little bit more conservative initially, right? <laughs> you know, because just in case if I'm not there. But uh, at that level, like I said, uh, Gustavo, nobody saw him on a top 10 list anywhere back in the day. Yeah. Uh, and then he moved top 10, top 8, top 6, and finished third, right? These kind of things... When you can, this is what I see with uh, with James. So now, Chris, imagine James fully expanded. What I was saying, like in 15 minutes today, you can pump up as much as you can, and that's going to be your last ever appearance. The world can, the world can see you for the last time. You're going to want to be pumped like you're going to explode next moment, uh, moment right? Mm. So that kind of look, I want him to start achieving during a training. And then that kind of look, I would want him to achieve when he's ripped to the bone, thin skin, and then expand it. Because once you visualize it, once you see that physique, you can see yourself on the stage looking like that. You know, mm. yeah. uh, James, where are you still living in the same spot, or did you move? Because I just saw you looking at different places near the uh, gym, right? I'm, I'm still in the same spot, but I am looking for a flat currently to situate myself down there more, which is is happening but in its own time because <laughs> it's uh the market's a bit funny over here at the minute how far is it from where you are now uh it's about two and a half hours on the on the road oh yeah Oof. that's two and a half hours each way yeah so I, I i'm down there once every other week for a day or two but it's fine because i get there i go there on the rest day and then i'll train the next day stay train and then come home so then basically I get two good days of training. Oh, okay. I get any, anything that needs to be like checked down there done, and then I come home. So um, it's not really that bad, and Yannicka drives anyway. So I'm just like sleeping in the car. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's not like you're driving there and back every day. My Lord. No, 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 no. no. Mm. A lot of the work, a lot of the things that are going on right now are done over the phone because the builder is in there doing the work. So it's pretty cool. So it's not too stressful. How is the builder doing? Is he doing his job, doing a good job? Yeah, it's good. Uh, you know, there's obviously some health and safety things you have to run over first in regards to knowing, uh, you know, fire exits, what can you block, what can't you block, you know, uh, even down to what walls can be adjusted and stuff like that. But it's all just really boring stuff. It's nothing that fun at the minute. Mirrors have gone up, flooring's going down, equipment's in there, but not all set up yet. So it's mostly the cosmetics that have got to be done, which is why a little bit closer to the time I'll be down there a bit more and train uh and then just be able to basically tell well yannick is helping a lot with the design so yannick will mostly kind of manage the builder for me while i'm focusing on the training yeah. so the main thing for me and yannick has said the same thing your main fucking objective james is to be the best fucking bodybuilder you can i can help you with everything else so she's a good woman you know what she's like and what about the mural did you oh yeah she's awesome did you find the uh art guy to do the mural yeah, we've had a quote from a gentleman. Um, I actually need to ask the builder for what price he gave. But yeah, we had a quote yesterday, I think, for a mural. So Because we're going to put a mural of Luke in the gym, which I think is going to be fantastic. So um, as long as it's to the spec yeah. that I want, yeah, as long as it's to the spec that I want, then I'll be happy to go forward with that. If not, the second option was potentially get one of those, you know, when you get like a photograph blown up and, and then actually printed onto the wall. So you can get like... Um, they use it in like commercial gyms, like in the health clubs and stuff, where they have images on the wall, which are actually printed vinyl kind of things. So we have two options there. But there's going to be a Luke Sando um, mural in the wall, which is great energy for me when I train. You know, 2020 in my season was fueled mostly by just wanting to finish something that me and him had started with our training. And it, and it carried me a long way. And I know that having uh, his presence... You know, I have, a, I have a picture of Luke on the wall there, a, a hand painting. And he's very much responsible for a lot of my reasons for training. Him and my, you know, on an emotional level, him and my mother are like my two main reasons why I still bodybuild. Because they believed, you know. So I, I like having him around. 
Yeah. Capacity. Wow. It's awesome. Great. So Milos, anything to add before we wrap it up? Uh, I mean, uh, I'm touched right now because uh, I didn't know that you were so close with, uh, with Luke. Yeah, that, that's great. Well, then you have an additional reason, you know, to push to the, you know, max. It's that, man. That's why yeah, I want to, he, listen, he did the Arnold. He come third and looked fucking brilliant. And I do believe if he was still here, he would have won that show at some point. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, yeah, for sure. I'm like, Luke, I'll do my fucking best and I'll work and I'll try and materialize some yeah. of the dreams, you know? But, but it's a message as everybody heard you and um, Chris, you heard uh, as well. I'm saying honest to God, the truth, that uh, James have to change the mindset, right? He has to change the mindset of that, you know, confidence, self-belief. I, you know, believe, achieve, you know, it's it's like downplay, you know, it's it's like yeah. overemphasis. It's not that, but really, you have to have that strong vision. And if you each and every day check everything, okay, it's going in the right direction, you know, it's going to change your mindset. You're going to have that positive outlook. Right now, as a physique analyst, as I told you a year ago, everything checked. You have no weaknesses, okay? You have no weaknesses, but you have to have that, you know, now a little bit more wow factor. Yes, yes, yes. Throughout the years, I've seen some of your, I've seen your posings uh, going into the, I don't know which year, but, you know, I follow you for quite some time. And there was uh, times that you super impressed me, okay? Yeah. So you see, now when I see super impressive, just a little bit more of that polishment, a little bit more of the width, a little bit more uh, of presentation. Yeah, I forgot. No, that's what I was going to tell you. And then, you know, chain of thought went so on. You were posing with some coach, like very dramatic posing routine. That was I never, like a I never got to do ago. the routine because I didn't make top 10 at the Olympia. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, but, but okay, now now I remember. Be, you know, so I don't know, Chris, if you if you saw it, that was choreographed perfectly, right? Boom, 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 all this other stuff. But when I talk about this, you know, posing, I want my athlete and I want James to do ten of the best poses that James Hollingstead wants the world to see. Well, let's say aliens would come here two thousand years from now, and they're gonna see ten pictures of uh, James. Which 10 pictures are you going to show them? These 10 poses have to be structured in the beginning of, of the posing routine, right? Yeah. Uh, that posing routine was more as a movement. And yeah, you flow perfectly and you okay. You get in those positions. Eh? Pose is a pose. Everything was beautiful, but it doesn't show the, yeah. your strength, you know, the, the your strength of the pose. This is how you have to create the routine, right? Mm. That... First ten or fifteen poses, you just want to dominate. Build around that. Mm. Yeah, check this out. Check that out. So this is how I, I would create a routine for everybody who's listening. It's not about the movement. Yeah, if you have a good movement, you know uh, it makes it better for sure. But it's a, it's not a dance contest. Yeah, I'm not talking about movement, but uh, you know it has to make sense. So you choose the poses with your arms up. So what are your best poses with your arms up? If it's double biceps, if it's some pose or, you know, ab pose, go up. Now we're down. So you go into down pose. Okay. Yeah. So now move to one side. Okay. It can be that. It can be that. Wh whatever. You one side and move to the other side. So what are your best front poses with arms up? What are the best poses with your arms down? What is the best pose on this side? You know, yeah. and back. And so once you check, these are my best from the front up, front down, front. Uh, now how I put them together, that flows. Yeah, yeah, transitions. Yeah. Then so they, the this is, even though they're not judging that really, but they're judging the physique. Mm -hmm. So your routine back then was beautifully done, but if I judge the movement and if I judge the flow, beautiful. But I've seen like few poses at the time, that time it's okay. It's good, but that's not James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear that. You know, it's you have to have your signature strength pose. So you just show what pe you want people to see and judges and audience. Your best poses. Don't compromise with the poses that don't make sense. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Totally. You know, don't do the just the pose because that pose because, exists. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't look perfect, don't do it. Makes sense. Uh, that was my message. Another <laughs> message. <laughs> All the tips. James, just to end on, what is the name of the gym? Where is it located? And then again, repeat, when is it going to be open roughly? So I have the Instagram page set up for the gym, which is the, it's the TBJP, which is trained by JP, X, Shed. I'm Shed. So it's a collabor collaboration between myself and obviously Jordan Peters' gym. So it's on Instagram as TBJPXSHEDOfficial. Um, updates will be on there. And it is based in Cheltenham, which is Gloucestershire in England. And uh, when my American friends or anyone situated in America comes over, it's not in London. So if you message me saying, I can't wait to come to London and see the gym, it's not in London. It's in a much nicer area. So uh, yeah, you can check it out on Instagram. Uh, any questions, just hit that page up and my missus or I um, will get back to you and let you know more about the gym. But we are opening in December, first week of December. And um, yeah, that's it really. Thank you guys. I definitely want to go check it out. I might actually come in December. I might come in uh, early spring, but I definitely want to check it out. You guys, you know, you're always welcome. Oh, dude, I can't wait, man. I'm like I'm like the traveling guy these days. I never, I went like years without traveling at all. Now I just want to travel all the time. Good. You should. That's what life's about. And any sponsors you want to thank? Anything you want to plug? Just, uh, you know, thank you to Yamamoto Nutrition. <laughs> thank you to Tough Wraps and thank you to Gasp Official. And thank you to Milos for being willing to take take me on. <laughs> yes. Great episode, man. I, I, I love uh, the conversation we had about the, uh, the, cho the, the choice of the coach and why. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Yes, so I, I'm excited to work with James. I mean, sometimes you get a client, okay, this is going to be a difficult, right? But uh, this is going to be a challenge. And then, uh, you know, I want this challenge. You know, so I want to make a difference. This is bottom line. And uh, But you heard the principles. You have to be honest. You have to push to the max. And it's an ongoing process. It's dynamics, how his body reacts. But, oh, uh, I don't feel comfortable. He might be even force feeding for a couple of weeks that, uh, shit, I kind of don't want to eat all that stuff. But hey, if this is what it takes, it took me before. I, I look at that uh, next meal and it's like, Jesus, I don't want to have it, right? I have to have it. This is it. Just embrace it. So Just embrace next... it. I'm looking forward to it. So embrace right. it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you guys. Eat that protein. All right, guys. Yep. Thanks, guys. Yeah.